hot out there. It's a great day, I thought, as far as um, weather, as far as our fans showing up. The Red Coat Marching Band was there. Our cheerleaders were there. Um, it was a you know great day, I think, for Georgia football and the University of Georgia. Um, I thought it was a pretty cleanly played game. Uh, we're thankful only one guy got hurt, and it wasn't too serious. Um, uh, Eddie McQuillan had a little something with his knee, but we don't think it's very serious. Um, not thankful that he got hurt, but thankful that uh, there wasn't a lot of that going on. And um, I thought, uh, start with the quarterback play, I thought Hudson did a nice job, like he's been doing all spring long, of uh, finding the open targets, uh, getting us in the right plays, right protections. I thought he stood in the pocket very well, bought some time back there a couple times to make some plays. Um, thank you. Did it. I thought he did a nice job. Overall, Fatone, uh, I think, made a wise decision to go with the uh, – normal color jersey to, to play live. I think it allowed him to show what he could do athletically to add to his game. I thought he did a very nice job. I think Bryce, um, he struggled today with a little bit of his accuracy. Um, you know, he and, he and Jacob both, uh, you know, threw a couple balls that probably shouldn't have been thrown. But that's just the learning process that you go through as a young quarterback. But I think those guys are, you know, very talented. I think they're guys that are going to be very good. Um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say uh, what kind of pecking order we have because it just it was just one day. We got a couple more days of practice left, but um, I thought that um, the quarterback play over, overall was pretty good, and that you know it helps to have good protection. I thought the number one unit did a very good job of protecting uh, not only linemen but backs and. And tight ends at time. Uh, at times, I think overall the protection was good. Uh, we ran the ball decent, not great, but decent. Um, I'm talking about the number one unit, basically. Uh, as far as defense is concerned, uh, I kind of feel their pain a little bit sometimes when they probably could have hit the quarterback as he's throwing it, or probably could have got a sack, or probably could have. You never know when uh, a ball's being thrown, like that one where Hudson rolled out and hit hit Chris down the middle. I mean, Amarlo had run past him about two steps before he threw the ball, so there's no way that ball would have got thrown. And so that statistic never would have existed. And now would if he had gotten hit and the ball was a fumble and the defense scoops it and scores it and it ignites the team, I don't know. So it's hard to uh, get some of those types of plays. But I think our defense is uh, absolutely in the process of learning, you know, what to do, how to do it. Um, our coaches are doing a good job of uh, making sure everybody um, gets it done the way they want it done. And uh, so, um, you know, it's going to take time before we really can sit here and say who ought to line up as the number one this or that on defense. Um, got a lot of freshmen uh, and, and a junior college player coming in in the secondary. We've got some young players coming in with some ability that we think will give us a boost and even fight for starting jobs. So uh, it'll probably be second, third scrimmage of the spring before we can lay out our starting lineup, I would think, defensively. So, what did you learn about your team today? Oh, I think that, um, I think we're getting there. I, I think everybody's working hard towards what we're trying to get done. I think today was the hottest practice of the spring. I like the sunshine, but it, it was probably, uh, a little bit warmer than what they were used to playing in, and uh, I thought they fought through it pretty good. Um, you know, uh, a lot of deep balls in the air today, and some completed, some intercepted, some pass interference, some batted away. I mean, a little bit of everything. It was good, just good learning to to see that ball in the air and, and uh, learn how to defend it better, learn how to play, uh, make a play for the ball offensively better, learn how to throw it better. Uh, you know, we don't mind taking shots around here. I think it's important to let the defense know you can go deep. And uh, we had a couple guys make some nice plays. What were your observations about the rhythm between uh, Mason and Conley? The rhythm, I don't know about the rhythm, but uh, they, um, I think, the first of all, the tempo of the offense was outstanding. I think Hudson really enjoys tempo, a, a faster pace. I think he handles that very well. Um, Chris is a very accomplished receiver in my mind. He's going to run good routes. He's going to get good separation. Um, and, and 
Hudson is smart enough to know where to place the ball to give him the best shot at making the play. And if he's got protection, you know, I'm confident that uh, Hudson will give us, all of our receivers, the best chance of catching it. He, you know, he threw a little back shoulder throw, and I think that was him uh, throwing it uh, on the end zone for a touchdown to the left. I think that was to uh, uh, De uh, Reggie Davis. And, uh, and there's, uh, you know, some deep balls he threw on the money. One time he got, well, I guess the first play of the game, uh, he was actually kind of getting hit as he threw it and Conley caught it. But that was another play right there. In a real game, there's a good chance that ball might have got stripped and, and a fumble and a scoop and a score. You know, the, the defenders, they know not to touch the quarterback, and they shouldn't have even touched that ball. But um, but I think that uh, those two guys will work just fine together. Mark, you threw about 73 passes total in the game today. Was it kind of leaning yeah. more heavy that way? You know, Todd carried it only four or five times. Yeah. Kind of normal game, a spring game. Like uh, it's up to Mike to call it the way he wants and our other offensive coaches to call it the way they want. I mean, I'm, I want to see guys execute. It's, um, it's good to see quarterbacks uh, throw the ball in scrimmages uh, in front of an audience. It's just one more facet of the game that you, you can't really simulate in practice. So I think it's good for those guys to – throw the ball and, and just see how they're going to react. Um, so I'm not I'm not mad we threw that many. Mark, what's going on with the offensive line? Are you guys trying to find the right left guard? Is that what's coming Yeah, that's out? part of it. You know, uh, Pike's been pretty solid at the right guard to this point. Uh, David, obviously, has been the center and done a good job. Colton uh, looks to be in the top five. Theus is in the top five. You know, the question is going to be, you know, is, is Cablano going to be left guard and Theus left tackle, or is Colton going to go to left guard and, and Theus go to right, which puts uh, Mark Beard at the left. And, and um, you know, so we're just going to have to wait and see. But um, it would have been nice to see uh, Watts Dantzler practice the whole spring because I thought he was coming along. Um, uh, I think we've got probably six, seven, eight – maybe nine offensive linemen that I think by the time the season rolls it around will be able to play for us. Mark, you said, uh, I think it was on the night that Aaron got hurt, that you felt like Hudson was the ready for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Have you seen anything in the spring that makes you think that? Not at all. I, I think, I mean, he had a good day today. I, I think he's had, the other two scrimmages were even better than, than today, and I thought today he did well. Um, He's just very um, knowledgeable. I think he's very comfortable. I think he's accurate. I think he just, uh, he's a competitor. I know he's excited about this off season and, and, and leading the things that the players have to lead in the summer. I think he's ready for all those challenges. And, and it was sad that Aaron got hurt, but it was good for Hudson to play a couple games. It's, there's nothing like being down 20 especially 20 to nothing in your first start and everybody's looking around like what's up and he's probably wondering himself so I think that game really helped him live through something that um, is better happening this past year than what's going to happen in the future I think. What did you think of your defense today? I thought they did fine I think that uh, I think the offense is ahead of the defense right now and it makes sense that it uh, does uh, you know, the entire offensive staff is back. The entire system is back. Many veterans that know exactly what to do. The only guy I didn't know what to do going into spring was Jacob Park because he was a mid-year guy. So tremendous advantage for the offensive team to know what's going on defensively. Uh, everybody's learning, you know. Coach Pruitt knows the system and what he's installing, but he he's learning personnel, you know. What can these guys do? What can't they do? Um, he wants to put guys in position to see what they can do. He's not, he wasn't trying to win the day today. He was trying to put guys out there and just evaluate uh, where he is. And, and I think our players obviously are just battling, learning, learning everything and getting comfortable with it. Even though there's a lot, there's a lot of similarities, there are some similarities in, in schemes. I mean, everybody plays three deep, everybody plays two deep and all that, but there's a little different language for everything. So they got to learn that language. They got to learn what each position coach really wants fundamentally. Uh, so it, it takes a little time. But then, like I said, you you go back and watch that film and you'll see, I can remember at least three plays that probably either would have been a sack or some type of uh, uh, 
fumble, you know, a quarterback with a ball out here and might have got a strip and a fumble and all that kind of thing. So those are the kind of plays that turn the game around and uh, the defense not being able to hit the quarterback, I think makes it tough. You feel like you have a, a better understanding of who might get Hudson's going to be the heir apparent is there for the backup? I mean, of those yeah. three, did you see anybody that stood out to you? Well, we, we've been, I say we, my Coach Bob and I have mainly been uh, seeing Fatone and, and Bryce kind of battle it out, and that's kind of how we've been uh, distributing reps. I think today was the first time Park ever got a rep with the one. I, I might be mistaken, but uh, for the most part, those two guys have been battling it out, and Park's been trying to learn what to do. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, I think it's been a good battle, quite frankly. I, I think uh, Fatone certainly did a nice job today, and, and Bryce probably had his least impressive practice. Uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, all spring long he hadn't done a lot of really good things. So, And we know he's still learning as well. Coach, with the way last season went, I mean, just this spring, have you noticed just a different – work level of some of the guys where maybe if they're not starters, they know that there's a real chance that they're on the field. I think the guys on defense especially, I imagine if you're interviewing, they'll all tell you that no one really knows who's going to play where, who's going to start, who's going to do what. And, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that this offseason is going to determine a lot. Uh, when you start deciding what kind of work ethic we got, what kind of uh, – you know, what kind of improvement can we make? So, I mean, the jury's out, obviously. And, um, but you know, I don't know what was it, two, two springs ago? The spring going into the year, we played for the championship. And if you all remember, our, I mean, our offensive line was, we felt like was pitiful in the very beginning. But by the time G Day came around, they showed a couple signs. And, before you know it, they had a great off season and we played pretty good up front. But I guess what I'm saying, there's a lot of time to get better in a lot of areas. And I even remember David Pollock, uh, the spring going into the year that he was SEC Player of the Year, he was getting whipped bad. I mean, Stinchcomb was just taking taking into the woodshed every day. And, and but he had a phenomenal off season and got in tremendous condition and worked on his technique. And before you know it, he was. He was making plays every day in practice and carried over into the season. Mark, in terms of takeaways from this game, do you take more or less out of this game than the other two scrimmage reads? Uh, I think, I don't know, um, oh, maybe a little bit more. I mean, it is it is closer to a game. Um, but uh, <laughs> it reminds me of back when I played quarterback and back in my day, you know, I had this great – game, spring game, but I probably wasn't having all that great of a spring. So I'm thinking, well, shoot, I played good in the spring game, so I'm going to be the man. Well, turns out Jim Kelly was the man, you know? <laughs> and I think I can finally admit that Coach Nellenberger was probably right. But, I, you know, it was hard for me and my mom to believe that was the truth. But <laughs> uh, So, you know, one – and he said it back then. He said, you know, he did a good job, but it's just one day, you know. And I, I got mad, but, but he was right. Say that again. I, I heard about the injuries with those guys, but how? That affects what we saw with personnel today. Oh well, I mean, those guys were getting reps, a lot of reps, and uh, you know, uh, JJ was playing a lot of first team nickel before he got hurt. Uh, Trey was playing a little bit of both first and second team reps, so they're right in the mix for starting positions. You know, they're right in the mix for playing time. Did Trey just get banged up in the last two weeks? I pulled a hamstring again. He's had some chronic hamstring issues, which we, we probably need to reevaluate what we're doing with him and um, and how we um, how we train. You know, I mean, there, there's something going on, and uh, you know, some of it may he you know he's probably got to take some more ownership too. You know, if you got a de deficit in some areas, and you might need to spend a little more time uh, with flexibility stuff in the off season than maybe another guy would have to. Mark Lucas. Red had a lot of snaps today. Were the yeah. injuries, the circumstances? That's part of it. But, you know, Lucas Lucas has had a good spring. I think Jeremy uh, likes the fact that he knows how to line up. He knows what to do. Um, he's a pretty good tackler. Um, you know, he's he's definitely competing for playing time. It's, it's legitimate. Uh, 
for him to think that he's got a chance to play some scrimmage downs. Uh, you know, Connor Norman was kind of in that role before, kind of a walk on coming out of nowhere in the uh, spring. Of course, Aaron Davis uh, kind of came out of nowhere and he's playing well. And uh, Askey made a player too, and a couple corners that redshirted a year ago because they transferred and are now having a chance to compete. So. I mean, if you're wondering if you're wondering for telling the truth about this thing being wide open, just just look at those guys and the amount of reps that they're getting. Is that a good thing? I think it is because it's it's letting everybody understand that um, uh, best man wins regardless of who it is, and uh, and these guys are good athletes. These guys are good players. Um, uh, I think reading about Aaron, I think he had a couple ACLs back in high school that kind of kept him from maybe getting the kind of attention he would have if he stayed healthy the whole time. And maybe got a diamond in a the rough there, you know. We're at least open enough to, you know, give him an opportunity, and, and so far he's doing a good job with it. Mark, can you talk about how Gurley's played in the spring and then again kind of conversations? What did you Todd, that? well, you know, Todd, I didn't know for sure what Todd had uh, as far as his ability to go full speed because in the – off-season conditioning stuff, our mat drills and all. We, we Ron Corson, our director of sports medicine, held him out because there were some things nagging his lower leg still. And um, so when he started out, I, I, didn't, I didn't know, was he full speed? Was he not? I even made a comment. I don't even know if he's going to practice uh, one of these times in one of our uh, press conferences. And so as, we're, as I'm watching him go, I'm, I'm seeing a little bit of a limp, a little bit of a whatever. And I'm so, I mean, I'm not going to jump a guy if, if he's got an injury or if he's t cutting it out through a little bit of pain. You know, I'm going to say I'm thankful he's out there and he'll work his way through it. But, um, you know, after enough practice, I felt like he was, you know, you might have seen a, a player or two that's like, hey, this guy, this guy's healthy and, and I need to see, I need to see more effort, you know. And uh, it wasn't awful, but when you're Todd Gurley, people tend to notice what you do, and you can't hide. And uh, But we just talked a little bit about um, his ability to lead and his ability to lead by by just practicing hard and by uh, buying into, you know, what the coaches are doing. And, uh, and uh, you know, he I think he took everything very uh, well. I think he started – I think it did pick up his – uh, his practice effort, but you know, I, and I'm not making an excuse for the guy. But when you're um, kind of a big game competitor kind of guy and been through it a year or two, and spring ball probably just doesn't get him too excited, quite frankly. You know, he's like, let's get to the, let's get to Clemson, let's play ball. You know, so but but even though um, he may feel that way, he still has to give effort on a daily best basis to become great. And you know, uh, those are some of the things we talked about, and he was awesome with it and did well. Marcus, last question. question: Do you sit out there and look around and do the math in your head? Hey, this guy's gonna be back. This guy's gonna be back. This guy's gonna be back. Or do you sit there and look? As far as injuries, that kind of thing. You look at the moment you say he needs to do. No, I. I well, I, I, I do both, but but I do. I as a head coach, I kind of look a little bit farther down the road. I think sometimes where I, I know what it's like to be the coordinator and try to get the first team, second team, third team reps, and, and, you, and you're kind of spread so thin, and you're like, my gosh, we're just, things are bad. But then when you, when you realize, hey, in the fall, you only have to put one team out there. And a lot of these guys are going to be back healthy, and it's going to be okay, you know. But sometimes on a daily basis, it can get real frustrating. Seth, uh, one more question, yeah. Seth, with my, with the time. I'm sorry. On, on, Trey, <laughs> on Trey Matthews, he was listed first on that depth chart. I thought, I thought Weiser was close, too. Hey, uh, <laughs> nah, I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> did, yeah. did Trey have a good spring in the hamstring of all this holding him back? Is that well, he's, learned, he's just, he's like everybody else back there trying to figure it out. He he works some one first team reps, some second team reps. Um, there's nothing settled back there, nothing. Thanks.